Dimensional analysis is a very powerful technique for problem solving and is used in biology, chemistry, geoscience, and physics. I'm going to use an example here from chemistry to illustrate this technique. So here's a question from a chemistry tech. It says, uh, calculate the mass of silver metal that could be deposited if a 5.12 ampere current is passed through a silver nitrate solution for 2.00 hours. Now, using dimensional analysis, the first thing you want to determine is what is the unknown? In other words, what is it that you're trying to determine? So in this case, we're looking at this, we're going to say, okay, that the, there's a mass of silver metal. So let's go ahead and underline that and say, okay, that the mass of silver metal is what we're trying to determine. Well, that's our unknown, which is going to have units in terms of mass. It's going to have values of grams, and the, um, it's going to have to attach there the silver. It's going to be grams of silver. So what we're really trying to figure out here is how many grams of silver. So this is our unknown. So before we go anywhere else, we want to identify what our unknown is. The second thing we're going to identify are our known factors. What do we know in this equation? And there's actually quite a few different things that are determined or for us here. One is that there's an electrical current of 5.12 amperes flowing through this solution. So we know here that the current, illustrated by a um, italicized I there, is going to be 5.12 amperes. Now, this probably also assumes we know that that is an ampere is a coulomb per second, so it's going to be equal to 5.12 coulombs per second. The only reason we're expressing it as such is that this is a more fundamental term, so it'll probably be easier to do some cancellation and so forth later. But the key thing is that we've de we have a known factor of 5.12 amps there. We can see that coming right here in terms of our current. We also know the time. Okay, the time here is 2.00 hours. Um, the, the point zero zero indicates that it has, um, those are significant digits, so it's not just two, it's 2.00 hours. We know, we know that to that uh, level of precision. So we can say that the time, italicized t, is equal to 2.00 hours. And we will now um, circle that in green, indicating, okay, again, that this is a known factor, 2.00 hours. Now, we could also represent that in terms of seconds, which is the more common MKS measurement. So this is in coulombs per second. So why don't we just express that also in terms of seconds. So since there's 60 seconds in a minute, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, that means there are 60 times 60, or 3,600 seconds in a minute. Again, there's going to be 60 seconds in a minute, and we're going to multiply that by the fact that there are 60 minutes in an hour, and we could cancel those out and say, okay, that there now must be 3,600 seconds per hour. So since it's desirable to re represent things in MKS, or meters, kilograms, and seconds for calculations, we can express this right here as also being 2 times 3,600, or 7,200 seconds. Okay, so multiply 2.00 hours times 3600 seconds. The hours cancel and we're left with 7200 seconds. So we now have uh, these factors all here which are known. Another thing which is known in this is the fact that there are 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. Now that's a definition, but we're going to write it right down here. We're going to say that, that 96,000 500 coulombs equals a mole of electrons. In other words, it's a definition. Since it's a definition, um, the left and the right must be equal. And we could also express that as 96,000 
500 coulombs per mole of electrons is equal to 1. So that value right there is a statement or a definition, but that's also one of the things we're, we have known. So we can see that right up here, that that is correlated with this value here. Finally, we can see that uh, it's giving us the gram atomic weight. We could have pulled this off the periodic table, but since they're giving it to us, we're going to just use that right here, and we know that there is uh, the gram atomic weight of, of silver is 107.9 grams of silver per mole of silver. Now, in most textbooks, you won't see the incl inclusion of the element there, um, but it's important here in terms of doing our calculations that we keep straight that we're actually talking about the gram atomic weight of silver and not of some other substance. Now there are some other known things here um, that uh, besides the conversion factors and, and the formulas, we, we know the, the setup for this because it's passing through a silver nitrate solution. So the silver nitrate solution, silver nitrate, is, can be expressed in this fashion right here. And when silver nitrate is put into water, it's going to dissociate into silver cations, which will be an aqueous form, plus nitrate anions, also an aqueous form. And so this is going to be a reaction, basically, a dissociation of the silver nitrate into its component cation and anion. So it's in this solution. We can go ahead and represent this with a beaker here. There's going to be an electrode here and an electrode here because we knew that it was passing an electrical current through it. So we have to draw that part in here as well. And so we can represent the source of EMF here as a battery with a negative terminal and a positive terminal. And we know it's going to be a solution because it was defined as a solution right here. So that means that in this aqueous solution, this water-based solution, you're going to have silver cations and you're going to have nitrate anions. Well, when we look at that, we know that opposites attract, so the nitrate is going to go over towards the positive electrode whereas the silver is going to go over towards the negative electrode because opposites attract. So the silver cation, which is positive, and the, um, is going to go towards the cathode. Cations go to cathodes, the cathode being the negative electrode. And it's going to ultimately plate out on this. And so uh, that goes back to our original question is to what mass of silver metal right here can be plated out or deposited on this if a 5.12 ampere current is flowing through this. Now, realistically, it probably won't be a battery doing this, probably be um, you know, a series of batteries, but the idea is that it's going to be deposited out on this electrode there. Okay, so now we're ready to start doing some calculations. And um, the next thing to do is to, is to set up um, our straight line method here for doing those calculations. I'm just going to draw a bar across here. And we know that um, we're trying to solve for gram silver. So on this side here, we must say equals something in terms of grams of silver. If it's anything else, uh, we've done it uh, incorrectly. Now, there's many different approaches you could take from this point, but I'll show one that's just looking strictly at the units. If we have gram silver in our answer, we have to look up here and say, what kind of things have grams silver in them? Well, when we're looking for the gram atomic weight of silver is 107.9 grams per mole, ah, we can see that it's going to have grams of silver. If I multiply by this value, then I'm going to have gram silver in the numerator, which is where I want it. And this is equal to 1. 
because one mole of silver is the same thing as 107.9 grams of silver. So we can express this either as 107.9 grams of silver per mole of uh, silver, or we could invert it. In this case, we're going to take it straight as it is. So we're going to multiply by 107.9 grams of silver per mole of silver. Now that vertical line implies multiplication times whatever comes after that fact. And so now I need to cancel out my moles of silver. Well, you might not see moles of silver in there. You see moles of electrons. But if you look at the reaction which is going on here, the silver cation is reacting with electrons which are coming from that cathode and producing metallic silver. So we can see in this relationship here that for every mole of silver which is produced, so for every mole of silver that is produced, is we're requiring here a mole of electrons because it's a one to one to one ratio. We can just put those values there, but um, it's, it's balanced as such. So now, if we know that there's a mole of silver per mole of electrons, if I multiply by this value, mole of silver per mole of electrons, I can cancel out the moles of silver. And at this unit, I, uh, at this point, if I stopped solving at this point, I would have grams of silver per mole of electrons. Well, that's not a very useful answer um, because it doesn't tell us how much is produced or even a rate. However, we do have the definition up here that there's 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. In this case, we see mole of electrons in the denominator. So since it's equal to 1, we can multiply it um, with mole of electrons in the top or mole of electrons in the bottom, and it won't change the answer because 96,500 coulombs is equal to a mole of electrons. So I can either multiply it um, with mole of electrons in the top or mole of electrons in the bottom. It, multiplying anything by 1 doesn't change its value. So in this case, we need to invert and multiply. In other words, divide by that value because we need to cancel out the moles of electrons here. So we're going to say mole of electrons per 96,500 coulombs. So here we can cancel out the moles of electrons. And at this point, we know how many grams of silver are deposited for every coulomb. Well, how to get rid of coulombs? Because we're trying to get just to gram silver. If we look back up here, we know our current. Our current is, is 5.12 coulombs per second. So if I multiply by that value, 5.12 coulombs per second, and then cancel out the coulombs, I now have a rate for silver deposition expressed in grams of silver per second. Very close to our final answer right now in terms of grams of silver. And we're going to look up here and say, OK, the time value was 2.00 hours, which we said was the same thing as 7,200 seconds. So since it was running for 7,200 seconds, if I multiply by 7,200 seconds, then we will see that the seconds also cancel out, and our value is now expressed in terms of gram silver. So the only thing that remains at this point is to do the actual math. And it's always good to do approximations in one's head before you punch the, the keys. And so you could express this in very rough terms um, of this value as 1 times 10 squared, all right? Because 100 is 1 times 10 to 2. This is just 1. This here is about the same thing as 100,000 in the denominator. So we could express that as 1 times 10 to the fifth, this value up here is going to be 
five. And this value here is about seven times 10 to the third with exponents. And so we can look at this and we see that there's 10 squared here. There's times 10 cubed here. That's going to be 10 to the fifth. So we can say that we have 10 to the fifth on the top and 10 to the fifth on the bottom. So we can just cancel those values out. And so we now can just look at this and say, okay, it's approximately in this range of 35, 40, something like that. So we know that we're dealing with something, you know, less than 100 and greater than 1 in this value. And we could actually proceed through to do the calculations at this point. So if we do the math here, it's going to be 41 Point two grams, which is certainly within the range that we had talked about there by our estimation. And so now we see our final answer of 41.2 grams of silver. It's expressed in the same dimensions, the same units as were requested in the, uh, the question setup. And now we've solved the problem by dimensional analysis.